Hello, this is Doc Toom, and welcome to the MedGuru CDB channel. We're going to have a very comprehensive but short discussion about the medications used to treat tuberculosis. So this is the anti-tuberculosis medications. So tuberculosis, as you know, is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. And this is common in developing countries, such as the Philippines. Now, I want everyone to memorize this. The common drugs used for tuberculosis, your mnemonics here is STRIPE. So we have streptomycin, rifampicin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol. So these are the common, most common drugs used for the treatment of tuberculosis. So again, stripe. Now, this is the sequence which we follow in the DOH, the Department of Health, the World Health Organization, and treatment for our patients with pulmonary tuberculosis. We have the famous acronym HRZE. And we have the drug after the HRZE regimen. We have the S, which is streptomycin. So the H stands for isoniazid. The R stands for rifampicin or rifampine. Z stands for pyrazinamide. E stands for ethambutol. S stands for streptomycin. Now, always remember this. All of your first-line anti-TB meds are bactericidal, except, I will repeat, except your ethambutol. Your first-line anti-TB meds are all bactericidal, except your ethambutol, which is bacteriostatic. Now, here is an illustration. Take time pausing the video, going over this. Take notes. So our first line drugs, all of them are oral, except for streptomycin, which is intravenous. The second line drugs, just to mention a few, cyclosserine, amikacin, capriomycin. And we're gonna end up discussion, this discussion mentioning the novel generation of anti-TB drugs. Don't worry, I'm gonna dissect this diagram. So let's start with the first line drugs. Isoniazid, rifampicin, ethambutol, pyrazinamide. All of them are oral. It is only streptomycin, which is intravenous. Now, what about your second line? These are the ones I want you to memorize. Ethionamide, cycloserine, I added fluoroquinolones. Then you have your aminoglycosides, namely amikacin, canamycin, and capriomycin. Don't forget the aminoglycosides, they are given intravenous. And of course, your novel generation anti-TB drugs. We have three, dilaminid, pretomanid, and bidacilin. Dilaminid, pretomanid, and bidacilin. Now, let's start with isoniazid first. The exact mechanism of action of isoniazid, the one which is stated in most references, is the inhibition of mycolic acid. Don't forget, mycolic acid is a very important component of the bacterial cell wall of your mycobacterium. So isoniazid inhibits mycolic acid. And... Isoniazid also has a secondary mechanism, and that is isoniazid has the enzyme desaturase. So let me rephrase. Isoniazid inhibits the enzyme desaturase rather than has the enzyme. So I stand corrected. Isoniazid inhibits the enzyme desaturase. And this enzyme desaturase is involved in the cell wall synthesis of your 
bacilli, your mycobacterium bacilli. Now, what about toxicities or side effects? So just remember this mnemonics, I, N, H. So number one, isoniazid causes the accumulation of iron in the mitochondria. And this leads to sideroblastic anemia. Isoniazid is notorious for causing neuropathy or neuritis because isoniazid impairs the absorption of vitamin B6 or pyridoxine. Isoniazid is also hepatotoxic. It can also cause hepatitis. Now, let's play around and please let me know what do we call this syndrome? Arthritis, rash, photosensitivity, fever, myalgia, after intake of a drug. This is your famous drug-induced lupus. So drug-induced lupus or lupus-like syndrome is characterized by arthritis, rash, photosensitivity, fever, and myalgia. And drug-induced lupus is associated with your antihistone antibodies. So drug-induced lupus is associated with your antihistone antibodies. Now, bring this with you to your exams. The mnemonics for drug-induced lupus, hip pop MCs. So hip pop MCs. So we have the following drugs, hydralazine, isoniazid, Prokinamide, phenytoin, oxcarbazepine, propaf propafenone, minocycline, carbamazepine, and sulfonamides. So, hydralazine, isoniazid, prokinamide, phenytoin, oxcarbazepine, propafenone, minocycline, you might want to add another letter M there, that's methyl dopa carbamazepine, and sulfonamides. So hip pop MCs. Now what about rifampicin? Now the mechanism of action of rifampicin, just remember letter R is letter R for RNA polymerase. Rifampicin binds with RNA polymerase, thereby inhibiting RNA or protein synthesis. Now, to be specific, rifampicin will bind to the beta subunit of your RNA polymerase, thereby inhibiting RNA or protein synthesis. <laughs> Side effect, rifampicin is famous for causing red-orange body fluids. It makes your sweat, your urine appear red-orange. So rifampicin is letter R. That means it revs up the RNA polymerase and letter R, red-orange body fluids. Now what about ethambutol? The exact mechanism of ethambutol is inhibition of the enzyme mycobacterial arabinosyl transferase. So your arabinosyl transferase inhibition leads to the inhibition of arabinoglycan. Now what is the significance of this arabinoglycan? Arabinoglycan is important for the bacilli cell wall synthesis. Now, what's the usual dose of ethambutol? Memorize the magic number, 15 mg per kilogram per day. So 15 milligrams per kilogram per day. Now, side effect of ethambutol is the famous retrobulbar optic neuritis and decreasing your visual acuity. So always remember, this retrobulbar optic neuritis or decrease in visual acuity okay, 
also presents with this description, the barrel vision or the red-orange blindness. So the first manifestation you're going to get with ethambutal toxicity is actually going to be loss of your color vision. And this is dose dependent. So what are these doses? So the recommended dose is 15 mg per kilogram per day. Optic neuropathy occurs in about 1%. As you increase the dose, 25 mg, the risk is now 5%. And with a high dose of 50 mg, the risk of the optic neuropathy or the optic neuritis now increases to 15%. So one of the first things you're going to be asked is what will you do if a patient presents with loss of color vision or loss or decrease in visual acuity and the patient is being treated with ethambutol? First, discontinue the drug. And recovery usually occurs after discontinuation of the drug and it is rarely permanent. So what about pyrazinamide? The exact mechanism of pyrazinamide is it will inhibit the enzyme pyrazinamidase. So pyrazinamide acts on pyrazinamidase. Now this PZA dase is responsible for the deamination of PZA to pyrazinoic acid. So pyrazinaminidase deaminates pyrazinamide to pyrazinoic acid, which is also known as your POA. Now, if you look at this illustration, pyrazinamide, this is a nicotinamide analog. Pyrazinamide, okay, so this is the enzyme here, pyrazinamidase or your nicotina nicotina midase. This will act on your enzyme, thereby converting pyrazinamide to pyrazinoic acid. And this is responsible for the killing of the mycobacteria. Now for the toxicity, please memorize pyrazinamide is notorious for causing hyperuricemia. And this is also associated with hepatotoxicity. Now, streptomycin is an aminoglycoside and mechanism of action as an aminoglycoside is it binds to the 30S subunit. So please memorize by heart your 30S subunit. Okay, so please memorize your 30S subunit and thereby causing inhibition of your protein synthesis. So memorize the 30S subunit and if you inhibit 30S subunit, you will inhibit protein synthesis. So don't forget streptomycin, which is an aminoglycoside, binds to your 30S subunit, thereby inhibiting protein synthesis. And just like all of your aminoglycosides, don't forget the two toxicities you have to bring with you to the exam and to your clinical practice. Number one is nephrotoxicity. Number two is autotoxicity. So streptomycin is associated with autotoxicity and nephrotoxicity. And don't forget of your first line anti-TB drugs, your streptomycin is what is absolutely contraindicated in pregnancy because it can cause congenital deafness. Now here, take time to go over this. The usual side effects, major side effects that come out in exams for your first line anti-TB drugs. So don't forget, RIPES, R-I-P-E-S, that's rifampicin, isoniazid, PZA, then you have enthambutol and streptomycin. Rifampicin causes the red-orange secretions in the red-orange urine. 
Isoniazid causes the peripheral neuritis. Pyrazinamide causes increase in uric acid. Ethambutol causes the visual problems. Streptomycin is autotoxic. So let's wind up this talk regarding the anti-TB meds. So I'll just mention in passing, your novel generation anti-TB meds. So you have delaminide. This is derived from the nitro, dihydro, imidazole, oxazole class. Oh, that's a tongue twister. Nitro, dihydro, imidazole, oxazole class of compounds that inhibit mycolic acid synthesis. Your delaminide, according to the CDC and WHO, is reserved only for the treatment of multi-drug resistant tuberculosis and extensively drug resistant TB. So that's delaminide. Now, winding up, bidaculine is also reserved for multi-drug resistance TB. So the novel generations of anti-TB meds are reserved for MDR-TB and extensive multi-drug resistance TB. So mechanism of action, bidaculine, it inhibits the mycobacterial ATP synthase. So this is the enzyme which uses energy of protons flowing across the cytoplasmic membrane in order to synthesize ATP. So bidaculine inhibits mycobacterial adenosine triphosphate synthase. Take time to go over this video again. Make sure you master the pearls highlighted here. These are important for exams. These are important for your clinical practice. So this is Doctoon saying thank you, God bless, and please continue supporting, watching our videos, and subscribing to the MedGuru CDB YouTube channel. Thank you.